Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel Material Welding offering free training in welding and NDT areas. If this is the first time you are viewing our learning videos, I want to say thank you very much for viewing our free learning videos and supporting us. And special thanks to our subscribers. As you will observe and learn, please note that each video takes so much time and effort for the preparation. Each of our training videos is custom prepared to provide you best learning based on theory and practical approach. We have so much to offer via these free videos, so please subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Thank you again. Keep learning and sharing. Today's topic is, gas metal arc welding which is also called MIG or MAG welding. After completing this lesson, you will be able to 1. What is GMW welding and MIG and MAG welding? 2. Understand the process principle and equipment. 3. Understand different parts of the process and equipment. 4. Understand the functions of the shielding gases. 5. Know how the electrode classification system work. 6. Understand the metal transfer mode in GMW. 7. Identify the GMW process variable which controls the process. 8. Know the advantages, limitations, and application of the GMW. In the process, an arc is struck between the end of a wire electrode and a workpiece, melting both to form a weld pool. The wire serves as the source of heat via the arc at the wire tip and fill a metal for the joint. The wire is fed through a copper contact tube, also called a contact tip, which conducts welding current into the wire. The weld pool is protected from the surrounding atmosphere by a shielding gas fed through a nozzle surrounding the wire. Gas metal arc welding is classified into two sub-processes. 1. MIG which is known as metal inert gas welding and 2. MAG is known as metal active gas welding. The deciding factor for calling MIG or MAG depends upon the choice of shielding gas. If inert gas such as pure argon or helium is used, it is called MIG. If carbon dioxide or a mixture of argon plus carbon dioxide is used, it is called MAG. The working of gas metal arc welding is shown in this animation here. We can see the direct current electrode polarity being in use as marked in the picture. The wire feeder is inbuilt in the machine and hence not visible from outside in this welding machine. Here the equipment set up for gas metal arc welding is shown. The main parts of the process are the welding power source, wire feeder, gas cylinder, welding gun, wire spool, and the work clamp and they are the basic necessary equipment for this process to function for the intended purpose. Let's understand each main part and its purposes. First is welding gun. The typical GMOR welding gun has several key parts, a control switch, a contact tip, a power cable, a gas nozzle, an electrode conduit and liner, and a gas hose. The control switch, or trigger, when pressed initiates the wire feed, electric power, and the shielding gas flow causing an electric arc to be struck. The contact tip normally made of copper transmits the electrical energy to the electrode while directing it to the weld area. The gas nozzle directs the shielding gas evenly into the welding zone. The electrode conduit and liner help prevent buckling and maintain an uninterrupted wire feed. A gas hose from the tanks of shielding gas supplies the gas to the nozzle. Here the welding torch cutaway is shown for learner reference along with their part name marked. Here the different components of the welding torch are shown. Most of the parts here are replaceable thus mitigate the cost for the full replacement of the torch and hence help to save cost. In this picture liners for the GMW torch are shown. These liners are available in two types one is closed wound stainless steel wire and the other is Teflon liner. The next important part is the wire feeder unit of the GMW wire feeder supplies the electrode to the work driving it through the conduit and onto the contact tip. Most models provide the wire at a constant feed rate, but more advanced machines can vary the feed rate in response to the arc length and voltage. Some wire feeders can reach feed rates as high as 30.5 meters per minute that as 1200 inch per minute. But feed rates for semi-automatic more typically range from 2 to 10 meters minute that is 75 to 400 inch per minute. 
Here the inside of the wire feeder is shown. The wire pushing mechanism includes rollers which are either two roll type or four roll type as shown here. The rollers of the wire feeder are important parts for the proper and smooth feeding of the welding filler wire. The rollers are 1. Often have a plain top roll. 2. Bottom, and sometimes top, roll groove. They are V-shaped for steel and U-shaped for softer wire, for example, aluminium. They are nulled for positive feed. 3. Care needed on the tightness of rolls. If they are too light, roll skid and wire stalls. Too tight, rolls deform wire and wire can jam. 4. And if wire stops up burns back to contact tube. 5. Here in the picture different types of rollers are shown. The next topic is the power supplying gas metal arc welding. GMW has a constant voltage power supply. Direct current electrode positive polarity is used in GMW mostly. As a result, any change in arc length which is directly related to voltage results in a large change in heat input and current. Sometimes a constant current power source is used in combination with an arc voltage control wire feed unit. In rare circumstances, a constant current power source and a constant wire feed rate unit might be coupled. Alternating current is rarely used with more. Instead, direct current is employed, and the electrode is generally positively charged. It is used in tantum MIG and aluminum MIG welding. Next, let's learn about the GMW filler wire. Electrode selection greatly influences the mechanical properties of the weld and is a key factor of weld quality. Electrodes contain deoxidizing metals such as silicon, manganese, titanium, and aluminum in small percentages to help prevent oxygen porosity. Some contain denitriding metals such as titanium and zirconium to avoid nitrogen porosity. Depending on the process variation and base material being welded the diameters of the electrodes used typically range from 0.7 to 2.4 mm or 0.028 to 0.095 inch but can be as large as 4 mm or 0.16 inch. 1.14 mm 0.045 inches will be used with the spray transfer process. 0.9 mm 0.035 inches used with mode short circuiting metal transfer process. Now let us learn about the electrode classification system of GMW filler wires. The electrodes are classified in ASM section IIC. Here in the table, the AWS specification number is given for different types of GMW solid filler wires. This explanation shows how we can get the filler wire properties from a filler wire classification. Here in mean electrode, R stands for rod so R means a solid filler wire intended to be used for GMW or TIG. Next two digit that is 70 means the minimum tensile strength of the filler wire in KSIS means solid. The last digit shows the chemical characteristics of the filler wire. The last digit shows the chemical characteristics of the filler wire. The next topic is the shielding gases used in GMW. The purpose of shielding gas is to protect the weld area from the contaminants in the atmosphere. Shielding gases can be inert, reactive, or mixture of both. Gas flow during welding is kept normally 25 to 35 cubic feet per hour. Argon, helium, and carbon dioxide are the main gases used in the GMOR. Here the properties of these gases are shown. As As we discussed earlier, the type of shielding gas used to define the name either MIG or MAG. 
Here their properties are shown. Variables in GMW welding are The primary variables in MIGMAG welding are Welding current wire feed speed Voltage Gases Travel speed and electrode orientation Inductance Contact tip to work distance Nozzle to work distance Shielding gas nozzle Type of metal transfer there is four modes of metal transfer in gas metal arc welding, which are short circuit transfer, globular transfer, spray transfer, pulse transfer. Here the characteristics of the short circuit mode are given, and the video shows how the transfer takes place during welding. Here the characteristics of the globular transfer mode are given. Here the ca The characteristics of the spray transfer mode are given. And the video shows how the transfer takes place during welding. Here the characteristics of the spray transfer mode are given. And the video shows how the transfer takes place during welding. Here the characteristics of the pulse mode are given. And the video shows how the transfer takes place during welding. Advantages of MIGMAG welding are High deposition efficiency when used in certain transfer modes No slag to chip as compared to SMOW and FCOW The process can be used on thin materials with relative ease if properly set Low hydrogen weld deposit with all electrodes High production factor since no slag is required to be removed and use as a continuous electrode with the parameters properly set for the application, anyone can weld after a very short amount of practice. One given electrode size can be used on various thicknesses of materials productively. The limitations of the MIGMAG process are Requires a wire feeder which is difficult to move and can sometimes be a maintenance repair burden. Needs shielding gas so welding in windy conditions can be difficult. No slag system so out of position welds are sometimes more difficult. Increased chance of lack of fusion if parameters and welding technique is not controlled. The gun is difficult to get into tight places. Is not suitable for windy conditions and underwater welding. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel and like the video. Make sure to subscribe to the material welding channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button below the video.